Alrighty, so let's begin this, shall we? Yeah. Alrighty, so Patrick, I'm very grateful that you made the time for me, and so my first question out of 25 is, uh, where are you originally from? Uh, Montreal. Montreal. Uh, all righty. That's kind of where I thought it was because I remember reading about it. And what made you get into motor racing? Uh, I won a, a race uh, on a short track, uh, Speed Skinny. I won a race as a championship. And uh, my dad uh, uh, brought me to a go kart track uh, as a gift. Ooh. And, uh, yeah, and I started karting after that, but I switched to uh, racing. Nice. So it was one thing that I led to... Uh, I was, uh, yeah, I was 11 years old at that time. Oh, wow. And that's that's pretty cool. What got me into yeah, motor... Yeah. Yeah, what got me into motor racing was when I saw the Talladega race in 2009 on television. And Brad Keselowski won the race as a rookie, I believe. Yeah, Talladega is always uh, exciting. Yeah, and what I like about Talladega and Daytona is that it's unpredictable who's going to win the race. It is. It is. <laughs> yeah. So who was your biggest idol in motor racing? Uh, at the time, it was uh, uh, Ayrton Senna. Was uh, uh, quite a big uh, idol of mine. Ooh. And, uh, Richard Bish. Yeah, he was great. And I know a lot of people in my family that don't follow motor racing, but they do know a lot about Ayrton Senna. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and of course in Montreal we had their Gilles Villeneuve. Oh, yeah, Circuit Gilles Villeneuve. That's the one track that yeah, I really I wish. That's the track that I wish that NASCAR didn't take off the calendar because that was a good race. Yeah, it was a, always a good race, always unpredictable. Yeah, for sure. What is driving on a road course track like compared to an oval track? Uh, it's funny because I've always uh, uh, preferred uh, ovals, uh, probably because of the speed skating. It was, yeah, it was kind of uh, something that I always uh, truly enjoyed. And uh, it's very different, though. Uh, a lot of braking, uh, hard acceleration on a, on a road course. And uh, when you talk about oval, it's mostly, mostly I would say uh, rhythm. They're two very different types of racing. Nice. Yeah. I've always liked road racing and I do a little bit of karting myself and I'm always good at road racing compared to ovals. <laughs> yeah, it's funny because people think oval is uh, easy. I think it's uh, very hard. I yeah. Think it's, uh, kind of road yeah, for sure. And if I had to pick, and this is just a Com uh, just a comment about one of the previous questions I asked. If I had to pick an idol of mine in motor racing, I would have to say Kyle Larson. And last year I met him at the cup race. Ah, oh, he's a cool guy. Yeah, yeah. Have, have you met him? He's a nice guy. Yeah, I did. I did. But I did the, the Indianapolis and the Sonoma race. Oh, wow, that's pretty cool. I encountered Larson. I kind of encountered him and had a funny moment with him. I encountered him when he was in line for a Porta John, and I asked for a photo. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> yeah. What yeah, yeah all, if, you get, if you get in line at a Porta John, you'll, you'll meet all of them. So that's where they go before, right? <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> I'm thinking that when I go to the NASCAR Xfinity race this weekend, I'm thinking that I might stand by that area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, 
we all have to go to the race, so. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> what was racing in carts IndyCar like? Uh, it was, oh, sorry, because I'm driving at the same time, but it was, uh, it was a lot of fun. Both cars were uh, insanely fast. Yeah. Uh, or, uh, yeah, some of the scariest and fastest and most uh, uh, craziest moments of my career. It was it was pretty intense because we uh, we a uh, guy uh, every year or there'd be uh, something you know and that crash and it, it was fun. I mean back then I remember. Uh, Racing in Fontana and uh, the grandstands were uh, completely packed, and I haven't seen that in a long time. Yeah, that's really it's cool. Not, it's only an Indy car, an Indy car and NASCAR. Ah, that's really cool. And what made you switch from kart racing to NASCAR stock car competition? Well, I did a race in uh, Montreal, and it went uh, really well because the uh, Paul Wolf, uh, the, the, the crew chief for Brackett Love, he was my crew chief, and then we fought out on Paul in a second, and that's when Ray Evernham called me and asked me to drive on a better car for uh, Watkins Den, Ooh. and uh, I drove at Watkins Den, it went pretty well, and then they called me to do a test on a normal, and the test went uh, pretty well. And, nice. Uh, so they, uh, yeah, 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 it was pretty cool, so they hired me. Yeah. What did Kevin Harvick tell you after the Montreal race when you congratulated him? Uh, I thank you for not uh, kicking him off the racetrack at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> so he was thanking you for not wrecking him pretty much? Yeah, exactly. Exactly, because back then I was, I was only doing one race, so I could have ripped him easily and win the race, you know what I mean? Yeah, because you weren't running for points. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I never raced like that, so I was like, yeah. That's good on you, man. We need more stock car drivers like you in the world. I'll say that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. What was your reaction to leaving? Yeah, but it, it, funny, funny enough, he, he gave it back to me later on. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, yeah when I got the phone, I said, louder. Ooh. Uh, I believe it was either outside or right behind me. And uh, I think it was outside Paul. But before the race, he came and uh, he said, uh, if you get a good start, I'll tuck in behind you and I'll let you... Uh, need a few laps, and after that, I'll go to go by. And that's exactly what he did. He actually oh. gave me uh, eight, two, three laps, and then he just went by and never saw him again. Oh, wow. That's good on Harvick yeah, to return yeah, yeah. the respect. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty cool, and I was kind of happy. So that's kind of when I, uh, I realized I didn't do it for nothing. I was kind of made off there. Yeah. What was your reaction to leading seven laps at the Glen in 2007? Oh, uh, that was crazy. I still have a picture of uh, the pit box uh, timing monitor and, and me up front. And, and I just went to a wedding and somebody gave me as a wedding gift, actually, that car in, uh, in a frame that they painted. And it was, uh, I was, it was special. It was, uh, that car for me was uh, was special. It was uh, different. You know, it was so huge uh, wow. compared to uh, anything else. And I was uh, was always impressed with these guys and all that. And and we had a lot of fuel for some front there. Was uh, for sure it was pit stops and all of that. But still, I was uh, really happy. Nice. That's good on you, man. And. You're, you did pretty good in stock cars, I would say, for a guy that was new in the sport, for sure. Yeah, well, I wish uh, I would have done it for a longer time. The funny thing is, uh, Ray Evernham, uh, when they uh, signed me up, they actually signed me up for three years. And then we had a couple of years as a 
option. And Ray Evernan said, well, if you don't sign you up for three years, there's no point picking you up because you're not going to do much good the first year. Second year will be a little bit better. And the third year will find out if you can do this or not. And I wish I would have done the three years, but hey, that was it. It was a sponsorship question. Uh, yeah, that's what, yes, in my opinion, NASCAR has kind of become the sport where they're picking up, you know, drivers that have a lot of money rather than taking a risk on some drivers like you, you know what I mean? Yeah, and the, yeah, I guess they need the, they need the money now, so Run these cars, whether it's uh, NASCAR or some or any cars, it's getting more and more uh, expensive. So yeah, did you hear? Yeah. Did you hear that Roger Penske purchased the IndyCar Sport? I did. I was amazed with the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Yeah, that's that's he's Roger Penske. He's really shooting for the stars in this in his career. Oh, <laughs> uh, isn't it amazing? Isn't it amazing? Yeah, and if there's if there's any team that definitely deserves to own the Speedway, it would definitely be Penske because they're the winningest team there. Yeah, and I think he's uh, the very uh, straightforward and uh, honest guy. So I think he's one of the only ones that could own the series, uh, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, the thing, the everything, and so I don't think it will be into a uh, conflict. Yeah, for sure. All righty. What was finishing second like in Montreal to Ron Fellows? It was it was fun. It was, fun. It, was it was crazy. I think it was raining a lot that time. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, Ron was uh, was yelling for people to stop the rain because it was raining too much. And I was just we're catching it. So I was telling us people not to stop the race because I thought it was only a light breeze. <laughs> how much it was uh, how much it was raining, but the run ended up winning it. So that was uh, he's a great guy, so I'm happy for him. Yeah. And uh, what was the reception from the fans like when Ron was able to win for the Canadians? Uh, oh, they were uh, crazy, going crazy, because there were a lot of people in the stands from where he's from, and, and uh, Toronto, and everywhere, and uh, so it was, you know, it was really good, it was really good. Cool. What was driving... Uh, yeah, everybody, everybody likes Ron. Yeah, and, yeah, I really liked the guy as a road course ringer, because he should have won a couple cup races, if not many of them. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Yeah, what was driving for Michael Waltrip ra racing like? Uh, it was fun, actually. Michael was, uh, was a great guy. He was uh, always nice and uh, a few opportunities that uh, I wouldn't have had if uh, he wouldn't have been uh, involved there. So I was uh, thankful to him and Napa. Photo parts also, but uh, it was fun. It was fun. You know, I wanted to do uh, more races, but he gave me one more than uh, what I should have done. It was, it was pretty cool. Yeah, that's good on him to do that. Yeah. What was your reaction? Yeah, yeah. What was your reaction to finishing eleventh at Sonoma in the fifty-five car? Uh, Oh, he was good. Yeah, I was uh, happy. He was really happy. And that's actually when he gave me an extra race. I think I did the uh, walk and plan after that with him. And uh, it, was, uh, it was because of what we did at uh, Sonoma. I was pretty happy. Oh, cool. So results can pay off over time. That's good for you. And what was driving yeah, for... Yeah, it's good. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, it's good. It was really good. Yeah. What was driving for Go Fast Racing like in 2016? Uh, it was good. It was okay. You know, they, they didn't have a lot of uh, uh, money and they were, uh, I hadn't driven in a while. 
and uh, when we got to Chernobyl, I didn't have any testing, and and uh, we didn't do the practices because they didn't want to use up tires, and so it was a uh, we were super cool guys, but except it was kind of a tough situation for me because I needed more uh, track time. So that's the only thing that uh, that was a bit of a bugger there, but. Uh, yeah, that was it. Those were my last two races there in uh, Indianapolis. Ah, oh, alrighty. Uh, what was driving in Mexico City like in 2008? Oh, that was fun. I always liked it. I always liked, uh, made a lot of friends in Mexico. Uh, and uh, people there are very friendly. Uh, so it was good. Uh, they were nice people and always uh, enjoyed it. Actually, I just... Uh, my family in Mexico has always been a great fan of what I did in racing and always followed me and we still talk today and I, I sent them uh, uh, my last uh, racing helmet I had for, uh, 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 that I could uh, give up so they, they were pretty happy. So Mexico has always been uh, an amazing place for me and I always got along well with the Mexican drivers also. That's good to hear. and. So you knew Jorge Getters and the other guys then? Uh, or he, no, I, I was more with the Chef Rodin, Adrian Fernandez, when I was in IndyCar. Ah, oh, so yeah. I went to Mexico a, a lot more when I was in IndyCar. Ah, alrighty. And I believe IndyCar raced there for a period of time, so yeah, that explains it. Yeah, they were in uh, Monterey, Mexico, and uh, Mexico City. Ah, all righty. And uh, what was leading a lap like? What was your reaction to that in that race in Mexico? Oh, it was pretty cool. It was pretty good. Funny just how Bush was, uh, was with me in the truck when he did the parade. And just kept asking me, what do you break here? What do you do? And how do you do it? And then uh, maybe I should have sold him too many tricks because he's always really fast. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that, was, uh, that was a fun weekend. Yeah. Let me see if I have any. Oh, yeah, I have one more, which is, uh, what was your reaction to finishing eighth on an oval track in Las Vegas that year? Uh, oh, that was, uh, that was great. That was a uh, super cool. I think that was in the uh, Xfinity series then. Yeah, the Xfinity, yeah. Yeah, that was fun because I think that the weekend uh, Casey Kane got sick. I wasn't supposed to be in that car. It was uh, Casey that was supposed to be in it. Oh. And uh, yeah, they said, well, you got to jump in the car and uh, you're going to have to do the race. And I said, okay, <laughs> no problem. <laughs> so I jumped in the car and uh, did the race and actually the car was pretty good and uh, had a wonderful race. Yeah, and didn't you live in Vegas for a brief period of time? Yeah, 13 years. Oh, 13 years. So that was kind of your hometown track other than Montreal, right? Yeah, exactly. Huh. All righty. That's pretty cool, man, and it's good chatting with you again. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate it. And uh, you take care. Yeah, and thank you very much for joining me today. And uh, again, I'm an associate of Vic Sifton, so you can probably reach me through him. Ah, uh, perfect. And say hello to Vic if you, uh, if you uh, see him uh, shortly. I definitely will. I'll tell him hi for you. And before this chat, he told me to say hi to you as well. So that's pretty cool. Ah, uh, uh, perfect. Great, great, and a wonderful guy. Yeah, I really like him, and he says he's from Colorado to an extent like I am, you know. He lived there for a brief period yeah, of time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. All right, man, I'll, uh, I'll let you go. I'm a little bit lost on the road here, so I'll try to find my way. All righty, no problem, and I'll keep you posted on when my project comes out. Oh, super. I appreciate it. No problem. Have a good one. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye. All righty. That turned out very well. Patrick Carpentier seemed even happier to talk to me. So pretty cool.
have a good one, all my followers, and thanks for joining me, even though it was only a few. So thank you.